Hello, Browning students. I am here to once again tell you the truth amidst the submersion of bullshit and indoctrination that you are surrounded with in the Browning School in the New York City. Regarding what's going on with this race stuff, I'm going to be as succinct as possible because I've been more lengthy in other videos. Cultural communist thought is sick. Part of this deep, sick thought is that the correct way for humanity to progress is to believe that humans should completely disregard our natural instincts regarding race and gender. And in order for them to warp your natural mind, they have to come up with these lies with the names of white supremacy, diversity, equality. Their lies, I've talked about them in other videos. The crux of it is, it is natural and loving and free and as healthy as can be to go with your DNA and say, I have empathy for all things and all people, but it is natural, I don't know why, God or whatever made me this way, to have an affinity for my own race, to commingle with my own race, to support a culture that was made through my own race, and my own race has its expression through the culture, the cuisine, the language, the architecture, the music, etc. And to preserve that, because it gives me a reflection and a history, a narrative of who I am and my identity so I don't become listless and full of despair. That is healthy. The left is sick, so they think that is unhealthy. So they are trying to take this beautiful first world societies that by chance white people happen to create and also take advantage of white people's penchant for compassion and destroy white people and take away our natural instinct to say we actually want to live mostly with ourselves. Now we have this situation with immigrants as a minority and that's fine as long as it doesn't destroy the society. If immigrants are 10%, 15%, 20%, okay, because the culture is intact. Then we're like, okay, you're not a white person, you're Asian, black, Hispanic, Indian, whatever, and we love you because we love all people, but we know that our culture is intact. These leftists are doing everything they can and succeeding incredibly to lie to you. They are lying to you. John Body is lying to you. Maria Del Oro is lying. John Body, unless he is brainwashed out of his mind, which he may be, because weak minds can be destroyed by this. See, I'm a strong mind. They can't destroy my mind. I see clearly. They want you to believe that let us keep destroying your culture. We must have this equality, quote unquote, diversity, quote unquote, and, and quote unquote, white supremacy. It's not. Can you imagine how wrong it would be for white people to just go into Africa and, and just make it first world and you have to get out of here? We want to have cheers on every black TV. We want to have white mannequins in Zimbabwe. We want to have everyone speaking English there no matter what. You can't worship your tribal customs, etc. It would be terrible. Can you imagine if a bunch of Mexicans got plopped in Japan? How terrible would that would be? But look at the left. You ask the left about that, they can't answer you because they're hypocritical. Nothing with the left adds up. There's nothing organic. It's all artificial. It's all disgusting. So, in short, this is the truth, which all those sick, evil people, and by the way, when I say evil, I mean one of two things. Either they're purely evil, but most probably they're just infected with evil. So I call them evil. But maybe if they were uninfected, they really don't mean it. And that's true. This is the truth. The cultural majority, the racial majority, has a moral right to preserve their cultural and racial majority. And the minority has a moral obligation to defer to the cultural majority and the racial majority in regards to culture and racial demographics. But we have no one out there that will stand and say that.
because they're all scared exactly like John Boddy, exactly like Mitch Ingrassani. And I bring Ingrassani up because he has claimed his whole life to be this moral superiority and he's a fraud, as you can see in my video. That's why I'm so pissed off. There's people out there like Sandy Pels, who is a great man. I don't know his politics. I really don't care about his politics because he's a loving man. And that man, besides his brilliant mind, has always been humble, something that Ingersani knows nothing about. So someone like Pels, I don't know where he is on the political map. He is trying his best and he knows his place because he is not full of hubris like Ingersani. These people are evil. They are destroying your white culture. They're destroying your native culture in a radically immoral way. So give them no respect. And if you have enough character, and you need not, but if you want to, you can fight for white rights and be a white advocate. This has nothing to do with hatred. This has to do with natural moral law. In the same way, if you have a six-bedroom house, it's a nice thing to do to take in an Mexican and put him in your guest bedroom and maybe bring him up as an orphan. Okay, that's good. He loves you, you love him, everyone thinks that's great. It is not correct for that Mexican to bring in six of his family members and start putting piñatas on the ceiling and start playing Mexican music on the radio and saying, hey, you're white supremacist. You can't have your culture here. You can't tell me when to go to bed. We're not going to have churches. We're not going to speak English. You're a white supremacist. That person is morally wrong because he wasn't here indigenously. Now, as a quick aside, regarding people saying, oh, yeah, but let's pull the Native American card. You guys took it from the Native Americans four or 500 years ago. In a certain way, yes, we did. We didn't do it as violently as they claim. That's another leftist lie. The Native Americans were as violent as anybody on the earth. Very violent people, which is fine. Violence is human nature. We do the best we can. But that was nature. You know why that happened? That happened because... The Native Americans, God bless them, had a Stone Age technology. And we had relatively modern technology with gunpowder and rifling and naval shipbuilding and military strategy and organization and philosophy, etc., etc. And when a far technologically superior culture comes in contact with an inferior technological culture, that's what happens. What were we supposed to do? Say, oh, there's all this land. We have these native people roaming around here and there. Let's all just go back to Europe. And then what would have happened? You think the uh, Mexicans would have just said, oh, we're going to leave these Native Americans here? You think the Chinese wouldn't have come over and said, oh, well, these Native Americans are here and they're Stone Age and we have all this technology. Let's just go back to China. That's the way it was supposed to happen. Of course not. That's what happened. That's why you build an army. That's why you invest in science. So when the neighboring tribes come and try to kill you, you say, look at this advanced weaponry we have. Back off. That's natural. So to hell with that stupid argument. Yes, if you're, for whatever reason, that technologically inferior, you're going to get taken over. It's called nature. It's called the universe. It's what you are. Natural law is what you are. How are you going to not trust the essence of what you are? How can you not trust the universe? If that's true, how can you trust your mistrust of the universe? See, it makes no sense. All you can do is be clear and go with God, quote unquote. Go with your DNA. Go with whatever you feel. That's right wing thought. We believe in that. We figured that out. Left-wing thought is sick, and that's why every time they get a hold of a culture with their sick arrogance and their hubris, this is what happens. Hell on earth. You can't watch a TV show and say, oh, I am a director. I'd like to have these white people in there because I like their acting, and maybe I like to watch white people. You can't do that. It's somehow immoral. You have to have a black, a gay, a lesbian, a Hispanic, an Asian, a this, 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 and the white person has to be the bad guy. Is that the joy of telling stories? If you are Mozart and your friend is Beethoven and this other guy is an idiot, but he's not of white skin, we have to have him along with Mozart and have Beethoven not write any symphonies? That's what the left says. That's what they're doing all over the place. How come blacks, God bless them, even though they're 13% of the culture, are literally on every other piece of media, whether it's a Facebook ad, a Google ad, a TV show, a book cover, 
everywhere. You have to see black people. They're not at fault. They're victims just like the rest of us in this cultural Marxism. Look, I'm digressing too much. The point is, these branding teachers, they're lying. This is the truth of morality. The indigenous majority culture and race has a moral right to preserve their majority and their majority culture. The minority cultures and race has a moral responsibility and obligation to defer to the indigenous culture around them and to defer with their numbers and their immigration desires. And if they don't like it, they can do two things. They can get out and go back to their native culture or they can wage war on the majority culture. But don't be deceived in the war they're waging. And that is what every single leftist, which is every single person in Browning, is doing to you. They're brainwashing you. They're doing covert warfare on your minds to make you go against your natural DNA inclinations. And that is evil. That is evil. I love every race. I most love my white race. And I will not stand by and let this brainwashing go on because I'm scared of losing my job. And I'm scared of not being invited to the cocktail party. Not me. And he's browning grit. Who has grit? Me or John Body and the rest of those poltroons? So at least there was one browning boy that grew up and respected that moniker, grit. This is grit. If you're inspired, maybe you can follow me and ask your teacher these taboo questions. Say, hmm, this guy wrote this book called Catastrophe of Multi-Ethnic Society. Can we read it in philosophy class or in history class? Can we dissect it? Maybe he's wrong. Let's see if he's wrong. I'd like to grow and see if he's wrong. No, you're not allowed to do that because it's taboo. It's against the communist thought, the hammer and sickle thought. It's about independence and free thought and liberty and rugged individualism. I can be wrong. I'm looking to see if I'm always wrong. See how powerful that is? You can't discuss what I say. They'll label me as a Nazi, as a white supremacist. I'm not. I don't think I am superior. I think my technology is clearly superior because we can make internets and F-15 airplanes and other people live in huts. Yes, that's superior technology. I don't think I'm spiritually superior at all. No, I don't think white people should be invading the world and taking them over. No, I defend all the cultures. I want them to be preserved. They're beautiful. I love all people. So you're going to call me evil? You're going to not discuss my views? You're going to try to make me into a, a bad guy? Judge for yourself. Am I a bad guy? I speak the truth. And if anybody in New York City had a backbone, they would too, but they don't. They don't. They don't. And that's why I hold them all in such contempt. That's why I shit on them in every video, because they deserve to be shit on. They deserve to be covered in shit. Most of all, John Body and Mitch Ingrassani. They are disgusting. They are disgusting preachers. God bless you, kids. Think for yourself. Research true history. And never, ever believe the fake news. Ever. I love you all.